morning. Welcome, everyone. So Friday, oh, but right. five years. <laughs> five years. Sorry, I shouldn't be picking on people. Any other celebrations? My dad's birthday is Friday. Hey. Sorry. My dad's birthday is Friday. <laughs> no way. I won't ask how many years. Happy birthday, right? Sixty-two. Sixty-two. Congratulations. We are gathered 
on the unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe peoples, and acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. As part of our commitment to reconciliation with the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island, we support the 2015 Truth and Reconciliation Commission Call to Action. We call upon all levels of government to enable residential school survivors and their families to reclaim names changed by the residential school system by waiving administrative costs for a period of five years for the name change process. Now let us start by lighting our questions. We light this candle in our love for God, for Christ, and the Holy Spirit. May the light of this candle remind us of the strength found through God. May the light of this candle remind us of the truth found in Jesus. May the light of this candle remind us of the Holy Spirit that connects, fills, and unites every single one. In the sunshine of summer, even when it's a bit smoky today, come to God's picnic. Jesus will be present. And as it was 5,000 years, years long ago, our hunger will be satisfied. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your presence there is life. Living water springs up and the bread of life appears. And all are fed with food to spare. We come to you with hungry hearts, waiting to be filled with a sense of your presence, with a touch of your spirit, with new energy for service. Amen. And let's start this celebration of the service with I Dance in the Morning, which is United 352. <laughs>
God of grace, you created our minds to grow in wisdom. You created our hearts to expand with love for you and your world. You created our voices to sing your praises forever. You created our bodies to dance in your name. Fill us to overflowing with your Holy Spirit so that we may worship you in spirit and in truth, bold and unafraid to follow Jesus, even when challenges confront us. In this time of worship, assure us of your presence with us and reveal to us the path you open for us, for we live to serve as your people, wherever you lead. Amen. And I now invite you to join in our prayer of confession. God, who creates the future, you call us to follow you, yet we prefer familiar paths. You offer us new beginnings, yet change makes us uncomfortable. You invite us into the fullness of life, yet we resist more than we already know. Forgive us, O oh God, and make us the courageous disciples, ready to serve in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. In Jesus Christ, every day, today and every day that before we after us, we are created anew. And so that in Christ, we have today and tomorrow in love. Trust in God's love. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with you always. Please take a moment to share the peace of Christ in any way you feel comfortable. That's it. As a background, each year, each lectionary year, we focus on a different one of the Gospels. And we're starting over again, this is year A, so we'll be focusing on the Gospel of Matthew. We've heard Matthew for a few weeks now. The Gospel of Matthew is very interesting because it builds on the Gospel of Mark. Mark was written for the people of Israel just after their temple in Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. The Israelites had started to rebel against their Roman conquerors, and that rebellion was brutally crushed by the Roman Empire. And in a final act of violence, the Romans destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. That temple was the center of the Israelites' faith. It was their greatest symbol of God's promises to them, and they considered it God's home on earth. So in response, the authors of Mark and Matthew took Jesus' teachings and recorded them in Gospels so that we would know those words. And those words, such as the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, were written to give the Israelites hope, despite all the tragedies and the loss of their temple. So those Gospels were written specifically for Israelites facing disaster and tragedy in their world. Last week, Deb read from Matthew 9, and it's the section immediately before today's reading. And in last week's text, Jesus had just finished gathering his 12 disciples, and he was sending them out into the world for the first time. He told them, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with a skin disease, cast out demons. And you may also recall from last week's gospel reading, Jesus gave them the following instructions. Do not take a road leading to Gentiles. Do not enter a Samaritan town, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The authors of Mark and Matthew wanted to make sure that the people of Israel knew that Jesus was there to save them. And fortunately for the rest of the world, the authors of the Gospel of Luke, written about the same time as Matthew, made sure that the rest of the world knew, but we knew, that Jesus was there to save us as well, and that God loves all people, regardless of the God. So as you're listening to today's scripture reading, as Hilda reads it for us, remember that they were written for Jewish people who had just been crushed by the Romans, 
and they lost their most holy of holy sites, that temple in Jerusalem. These words were written for people that highly valued values. They valued honor above all else. Families and honor were more important than wealth and prestige and even their own lives. Israelites would sacrifice almost anything to protect their family's honor. And so as Hilda is sharing the gospel reading, please try to hear those words from the perspective of a conquered Israelite who had just witnessed the destruction of their temple and someone who valued family above all else. Let us pray. Today, O oh God, we remember you as creator, redeemer, sustainer, the foundation of our being, the holy presence who is always with us. Help us to turn to you and your word in our times of trouble, as well as our times of joy, that we may know and live your will for us.
expectations of our hearts and our actions in the world be acceptable in your sense, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Those are really harsh, harsh words. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have come to bring, I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. One's foes will be members of one's own household. It hardly sounds like Jesus. And imagine how horrified those disciples must have been when they heard those words. Their nation and their temple were in ruins, and now Jesus was telling them that he came to tear their families apart. Family. The most important thing in their lives. How in all that's holy could that be words of good news? And yet those are the words that gave them hope in the midst of their brutal world. That was the advice that Jesus shared with the disciples as he sent them out on their first missions into the unforgiving wilderness. That was how Jesus gave them courage to change the world as God wanted. What he's saying is no matter how close a family is, no matter how dedicated a person is to protecting and caring for their family, no matter how much we love each other, Every single member of a family is unique. We are all unique individuals, regardless of our relationships. And that means every person has unique beliefs that may differ from those that they love the most. That was true 2,000 years ago, as it is now, even in Jesus' family. We know that Mary and Joseph and Jesus went through many hardships. They had to leave their home in Nazareth. The king wanted to kill their infant son, Jesus. And they fled hundreds of kilometers through four lands to protect Jesus from Mary. Life for that family was exceptionally difficult. And as we all know, when we're going through difficult times with intense stresses, tempers can be a little short. Mary and Joseph certainly had a lot of stress in their lives, far beyond what most of us have ever experienced. And yet, through all of that, through all those experiences, they loved and cared and supported each other. They were a united family. That's the kind of dedication that Jesus is asking us. Following Jesus sometimes means we need to be strong. We need to stand up for what's right and help others as Jesus taught us. Even if that means disagreeing with those we love the most. Let me give an example. The command to love your neighbor as yourself is fundamental to, teach, to living as Christ teaches. And yet every single one of us, whether we know it or not, have prejudices and dislikes some other types of people. We may even hate them. What's surprising is how often we just don't know our own prejudices until someone points them out to us. If we're lucky, we have someone in our lives who loves us enough and loves God enough to speak up and help us grow beyond those prejudices and that hatred. It may be a child who's grown up in a multicultural society and then comes to realize that their parents can't stand Muslims or Asians or gays or whoever else. And that child, with love and dedication to Christ, speaks up and talks to their parents about their prejudices. That can be a pretty nasty night too. It can be tough. Those conversations, even though they're coming from love, sometimes drive a wedge between those people. But that's the kind of honest, courageous love that will change our world to what God wants. And frankly, what's the alternative? 
Should that child simply ignore or pretend to agree with the hatred and prejudice? Should they stay silent while other children of God are hurt by their parents' actions or words? According to Jesus, no. It's up, of each, it's up to each of us to help others, <coughs> especially those we love, to understand and grow in their love for God and our neighbors. And sometimes, family relationships, even families like they had in the Israelites' time, even Mary and Joseph's family, may be less important than ensuring that everyone, everyone, knows and feels God's love in their lives. I really dislike putting caveats when I'm talking about Scripture, but today is one of those times when I have to put a caveat to the message. Again, I'll give an example. During my studies for ministry, ministry I had a professor that taught Christian history and Christian values. Sadly, the values that he taught were from a time when Christians believed that it was their God-given right to hurt and even kill people who didn't believe in Jesus the exact same way that they did. This professor claimed that the best way to love others as work handed was to change them to your way of thinking, regardless of how much harm it caused that other person. For example, this professor believed that all sexualities and genders other than cisgender heterosexuals were sinners and should go to hell. And he made sure that every one of the students knew that. Thankfully for him, he was tenured, so he got away with it. Initially, the students in my class just kept quiet, and the LGBTQ plus students simply hid. But we gradually spoke up. The LGBTQ plus students in our class started making sure that everyone knew who they were, including the professor. And they knew they were proud, and they knew that they were loved by God for exactly who they were. And then the allies in the class came together and stood up and let the professor know that God loved everyone for exactly who they are. Did we change that professor's beliefs? Probably not. But we can pray, and with God's grace, we at least planted some seeds. Regardless, the people who in our class who were hurt by him knew that what he taught was not Christ's way. They knew that we loved him. And they knew that God loved him exactly as they were. In my opinion, the way the professor claimed to be sharing God's love was absolutely not what Jesus taught us. In this case, I believe the students understood better than the prophet. Speaking up to help others understand and grow in their love for God and their love for neighbors never means using Jesus' sword to hurt others or force others to believe exactly as you do. Loving our neighbors and loving our families doesn't mean that we use force or threats to make them just like us. Loving our neighbors as ourselves means loving them for who they are. Loving our neighbors and our families, families means supporting them as they discover their own prejudices and hatreds and discover that those are walls that are holding them back from God's love. May we pray that we may all know God's love and God's strength and Christ's wisdom as we help those that we care and love for, help them to tear down those walls that are keeping them from universal and eternal love. Amen. We're not having a hymn now because of the community service, so we'll go directly into the blessings of our offerings. And as a reminder, we don't do collection through the service, the plate is in the back. Today, I would like to make a special thank you to the small team of people who decorated here for a sanctuary. Sheila with flowers, Judith preparing the communion tables, Captain supporting us, flowers and decorations. It's a small team, but they keep this place beautiful, and we really appreciate it. Let us pray. 
We give with the hope, dear God, that you would remake us in Christ's image. Be near to us as we draw near to you. Let our lives praise you as surely as our gifts seek to honor you. And take what we offer now and use it for your glory. For Jesus' sake. Amen. We now listen to Pour Out Our Spirit.
Holy Spirit of God, fill the world with your peace, fill the church with your purpose, and fill us with your power for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. We celebrate the Spirit of God who hover over creation and brought order out of form. We praise you, Spirit of God. We celebrate the Spirit of God who filled Jesus with power and wisdom and through Him make the life of God available to all. We praise you, Spirit of God. We celebrate the Spirit of God who has poured out on all people and lead us into the kingdom of God. We praise you, Spirit of God. And so, as we gather at the Lord's presence among us, and we open our hearts to the Spirit influence. Lord, we come knowing that we depend on you for life and truth and love. We come knowing that you welcome us with open and accepting arms. We come ready to meet with you and be changed by the encounter. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the eve of his crucifixion, gathered with his friends for a meal. During supper, he took a loaf of bread and gave thanks for it. Then he broke it and passed it among those with these words. This is my body, given for you. Take, eat, and remember me. After the meal, Jesus took a cup of wine and gave thanks for it. Then he passed it among them with these words. This is my blood, which is shed for you. Today, drink and remember me. So now we eat and we drink and we remember Jesus and his great love for us. And we will continue to do all of this until it's on earth and it is in heaven. Before I invite the servers to come forward, this will be the second time we're using a new procedure to hand out the elements. Each of the servers with the bread will have tongs, and they will use it to grab a piece of bread. Please do not grab from the tongs because it contaminates the tongs. We will drop the bread into your hands. I ask the servers to come forward. Please come forward and we will offer you the bread of life and the cup of hope. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this meal of remembrance and for coming to us in the spirit power as we share it. May the love we find in this table be reflected in our lives, and the great power we receive at this table may us be generous and generous. May the Spirit who fills us again at this table lead us to be those who proclaim God's kingdom in every word we speak and in everything we do. For Jesus' sake.
Before I begin the prayers of the people, are there any people or situations that you'd like us to mention today? God of compassion and courage, in our weakness, you are our strength. In our sorrows, you are comfort and peace. We thank you for your embracing presence in our lives. Embrace every situation we lay before you today with your steadfast love. We thank you for the moments of joy that break into our lives, for love given and received, for friends who furnish our life with meaning and happiness, and for family to embrace us with love and understanding. We pray for those who cannot feel joy today, for any estranged from family or friends, and for those feeling stress as the costs of living rise, and for those who face any kind of loss. Embrace us all with your mercy, O oh God. Please give us grace to respond to the needs around us. God of the nations, we pray for our country as Canada Day approaches. We give thanks for peace and plenty in this land and for the resources to support those facing difficulties in our communities. Challenge those who govern to share resources as a generous global partner and commit to international efforts to preserve the earth for future generations. Guide leaders to set fair policy that protect vulnerable groups and ensure equity and dignity for all. Embrace us all with your mercy, O God, and give us grace to respond to needs around us. Eternal God, we thank you for your people in every age who have entered into your heavenly presence, especially those dear to our own hearts. Thank you for the memories that inspire us, for love, laughter shared, Hear us now as we offer prayers and silence for the concerns in our hearts this day. Compassionate God, may we pray that you, your presence, and the Holy Spirit fill a lean and Richard and Carol as they heal, as they recover, as they deal with changes in their health. May they know that we are praying for them and we are thinking for them and we love them. May they know your love and your strength, your compassion and your joy as they go through these difficult times. Lord, we also pray for Hazel and Christine today. They are facing difficult challenges. Let them know your strength. Let them know your love. Let them know Jesus' wisdom as they struggle to find the next step in their journey, the next step in their path, and where they will find your love and strength in their futures. Dear Lord, we also pray for Nick and Joel this morning. May they know that we always love them. May they know you love them regardless of where they are or what they're doing, who they're doing, anything with them, who they're playing, being joyful with. May they know your love. May they know your presence as we go into this whole week. We ask this as followers of the way of Jesus and pray as he once taught us. Our Mother and Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's close with another upbeat hymn for the Lord and this one's called Refiner's Fire.
filled with the joy of Christ and the love and compassion to change the world as God wills. Have a wonderful week.